Nintendo fans are a unique bunch. We go through a lot, like a lot, waiting for series that may or may not ever appear again, taking half steps and stumbles on what should be modern, standard services like stable online play. Really? Purchasing Super Mario World for the, what was it, like fifth time technically? But if there's something that a lot of us can consistently agree upon, it's that Amiibo are pretty neat to look at. They are, however, a bit of a double-edged sword. I honestly don't know when was the last time I bought an Amiibo for its in-game benefits over just putting it somewhere on the shelf to look cool with the rest of them. See, whether you're aware of it or not, there are many of us suffering from an affliction of sorts. That is our particular penchant for purchasing plastic. Hello everyone, so good to see you. I am a big fan of... Amiibo! Amiibo have been around for nearly 10 years. The first wave of them, introduced with Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS, included this Mario right here. Uh, since their release date back in November 21st, 2014, we have seen several series, one-offs, third-party, and even some soft, non-plastic Amiibo released. But there's one constant thought throughout the entire lifespan of Amiibo, and that's... When's the next Smash Amiibo coming out? We have finally hit the end of that road. We started with Mario, and we have effectively ended the Smash Brothers series with Sora! If you told me back when I bought this Amiibo that I would still be holding this in my hand with Sora in the same series, I would have said you were crazy. But here we are! And because the quality and production of Amiibo has changed in the last 10 years, I thought it'd be fun to just go back, observe, and rank every single Smash Brothers Amiibo that's been released. Yes, I have every single one. And what better way to celebrate having so many of these figures than by attempting to monetize and earn back just a tiny little increment of all the money that I spent buying these in the first place with my poor opinions. What is my life? And as I contemplate where my life savings have gone, I'm going to be ranking these compared only to other amiibo within the Smash Brothers series. I'm going to be doing my best to not compare to other versions of characters that may have been released, if I can resist the urge. I will be ranking based on the quality of the amiibo, which will include accuracy of the character, does it represent them well? The pose, does it look good on the base? Mold and model, any unsightly creases, deformities, a need for plastic stands to artificially prop them up? And personal inputs, just what do I think? With that said, we're going to be going down the line in order of the character's entry into Smash Brothers. Pretty much how Sakurai numbered them, except the weird Echo Fighters numbering. That was, uh, that was a choice alright. This means that naturally, our first amiibo is... Mario. Alright, so a lot of this is going to be very train of thought, so so bear with me, okay? Uh, as we start with Mario here, who looks... Actually, it's a really good start to the amiibo line. Um, there's not really a bad looking Mario amiibo. This one is very solid. He has a fireball, which you don't really see very often in a lot of amiibo, even in the Smash line, that there's like an extra effect that they put into the plastic. And if you look really closely, at the hand, it feels like there's some extra white there. I don't know if that's just the base of the fireball or it's just like the reflection of the hand in the plastic. If that's the reflection of the hand in there, then that's really impressive, actually. Uh, and there's also some lighting on his overalls. You can see some of the flames lighting up um, there. You don't see a lot of shading like that in Amiibo, honestly, or lighting. So I'm gonna put this in a solid A rank Amiibo. I have no qualms with this one, it's very nice. Second on the list, is a uh, DK. So unfortunately for Donkey Kong, we uh, already have a change in quality here. And as you can see, there's a massive podium that he's just sitting on back here. Uh, I don't think at the time that all these models were rendered in their arts, that they had an idea that they were gonna be translated into figures. So a lot of them don't really have a, uh, a, a stance that has that in mind. And unfortunately, Donkey Kong suffers a lot from that because he barely just has a toe sitting down on the base. And I'm gonna, this is gonna happen a lot when you see these on here. I'm not a fan of these at all. It kind of hurts it. Um, the eyes are kind of deadpan. There's a lot of amiibo where they're supposed to have eyes kind of looking at you in a certain way, but they kind of just look straight on. And I know it's really hard to get those kind of eyes looking there, but here he just kind of stares into your soul. We're gonna put this one a bit lower to start with. Uh, I give this a C. That base is gonna hurt a lot of the ranks on a lot of these amiibo. Uh, but if we move on there, onward to one very clear example, uh, Link. <laughs> I just can't. The famous P stand. Oh my gosh. This is probably the worst possible Zelda amiibo of any Zelda amiibo that's been released ever. The sword, you're going to see this a lot. Floppy sword syndrome. 
the swords of many characters are just so easily movable and at this point a lot of them kind of just start bending this one isn't so bad actually but his pose he's just looking straight down even in like the official art for these they're looking he's looking dead down to this to the floor uh, very early on, they had these very thin, nice little poles that stuck out instead to support them. And as time went on, I guess they decided this was more financially viable to just have these weird plastic stands instead. I don't know why it's yellow. Because the Triforce is gold? I don't know. But this one's really bad. It's probably one of my least favorite, unfortunately. Which I love Link, but man, it does not work for it. This is a D-rank amiibo. It is way down there, unfortunately. Moving on to an amiibo that's a bit better in quality is Samus. Um, this one is an interesting one. She's just kind of stepping forward in a pose that I don't really see Samus doing very often. Um, a lot more of the, a lot of other amiibo have more dynamic poses, but some of the ones where they just stand there, they kind of works, and others they just don't. Um, this is probably one of her least interesting poses throughout the Smash series. There's been other better ones where she's actually aiming her arm cannon. But um, at the same time, it's not a bad amiibo. It's just that you'll notice this for a lot of humanoid characters, mostly the anime style characters on here, that they're not really the best ones for this because uh, they need to fit a certain structure, a certain spacing around the amiibo. Uh, probably those the spacing that you see in the box themselves. They have to fit in there. And so they can't really make them too big or else it gets out of, uh, it gets out of place. This is where I noticed that there's a lot of attention to like the metallic shine. So this is like a B rank amiibo. Not terrible, could be better, but it's a good amiibo. Let's see, let's go on and move to Yoshi over here. Yoshi, I mean, so this is an example of the kind of character that looks best on amiibo. Just simplistic looking characters with, with simple designs, ones that aren't humanoid style. Yoshi, I, I mean, it looks really good. It's really solid. I think the eyes are supposed to be looking at me. Unfortunately, this is another one where the eyes kind of just look dead on. I think you're supposed to be able to see them, him looking at you from this from this pose, and he's supposed to be looking right back at you, but it's a little bit off. Um, not, not too noticeable, so it's not the worst thing ever. I think because there's just there's a lot of parts where you can see where he's like stitched together on the molding. So I would put this at a B rank. Yoshi, B rank amiibo. He's right there in the middle. Nothing wrong with that. And so here we have little Kirby. <laughs> Our little Kirby amiibo. You can't get a lot wrong with Kirby. He's just a round boy. There's not a lot that you can do to mess up Kirby. There's probably like a little bit of the, the, the molding you can see on his bum back here, but that's not really much of anything to complain about. You're gonna see him from the front anyways. I like how the mouth, you can't really tell. The mouth is actually open. It's not just painted on like the eyes or the cheeks. There's actually an open mouth, which those little details, I do appreciate those. So yeah, he's just he's just sitting down. He's chill. There's only so many ways you can pose Kirby. Um, this is this is an A rank. You, you you can't do too much wrong with him. He's an A rank amiibo for me. Following Kirby is Fox. Um, another victim, unfortunately, of very early amiibo production where the bases, the supports here were a strange color and not clear. Uh, the dark blue, it throws me off, man. If this was clear, I think it would rank a little bit higher for me. Uh, the texture looks really nice. I do like how he has um, different textures for the clothing. I don't really play places as high as I feel like some other people would, but but you know I'm I gotta put him somewhere. So we're gonna put Fox in the B tier. He is a B tier amiibo. I don't mean that insultingly. He, he's he's a good amiibo, but he's not like a great amiibo. Unlike this one, Pikachu. Pikachu is a really nice looking amiibo. Unfortunately. Pokemon Company just doesn't really want to make a lot of Pokemon Amiibo in general. The only other Pokemon Amiibo we really got was Detective Pikachu. And then we have this one. This one, I mean, it's it's Pikachu. It's another one where you can't really mess it up. It's it's perfectly identifies the character. It looks really nice. He's just kind of standing there. <laughs> Uh, there could have been a bit more of a, dyna a dynamic pose, I think. Uh, it doesn't really work with Pikachu because I always see Pikachu running around and bouncing around. So I give this Pikachu probably right next to Kirby. I'll put him in A rank right next to Kirby. Uh, next to that, we have... Oh, gosh. So, um... Lu Lu Luigi... They're, they're trying to be Mimi with Luigi here with the pose. He He's just planking in the air and it, it kind of doesn't work 
<laughs> this was not meant to be an amiibo. This awkward little pizza shape, it's literally a pizza that he's bouncing on to, to stay afloat. It doesn't work. Um, the, the pose from Brawl, his pose from Smash Brothers Brawl is better than this one. I'm sorry, Luigi. He's one of my favorite characters, but he's like a C rank amiibo. He's not offensive enough to be a D rank, but he is kind of low there. Um, but unlike that one, we have the very nice Ness amiibo. Ness looks amazing here. Uh, I, I love just the pose, the design of him. It looks so nice. And just the fact, just the fact that we have Earthbound, official Earthbound figure that we can put around in our desk. That was a major thing for me because I absolutely love Earthbound as well. I, he just looks, he looks perfect, man. And he doesn't need any other extra support, which I'm kind of surprised by because he has such small feet, but I guess he's also just a, sh a, he's a short king. He's a short king, so that's why that works out. I would put this as our first S rank amiibo. He is that good to me. I love this amiibo so much, and I think he deserves that spot. Beyond that, we have a couple more characters from the Smash 64 roster. Uh, another victim, I think, of the unfortunate posing of characters back then is Captain Falcon. He, uh, he, he just got... <laughs> he's got the flagpole just sticking up right under his thigh. And, like, this would, this would be really cool, honestly, if it didn't have the same problem as Link of needing this big supports and his pose causing him to look a little bit too low down to the ground. And I, I can't really justify putting him in a high rank because of that. As much as I love F-Zero, as much as I love Captain Falcon, he also will join uh, Luigi in the C rank. So I, I love I love the spirit, I love the effort, Captain Falcon, but it just doesn't work in a figure. And finally, we're rounding up Smash 64 with Jigglypuff. Now, unlike Kirby, Jigglypuff, the same shape, essentially, but Jigglypuff is doing a pose here where, as the balloon Pokemon would, is floating off the air a bit. But this massive pole is just right, going right up there <laughs> aggressively. Uh, it's an era where they started to make them a, a bit less noticeable. It's, it's a clear plastic at the very least, so you can't really uh, dock it too much for that. But, you know, it, it does look really good. It, it's perfectly just Jigglypuff. The bottom is kind of aggravating because you can see that round crease going all the way around the bottom. I'm trying to get that on camera. It's going all the way around and it's, it's a lot more noticeable than with Kirby who's just sitting down and you see it behind them. But obviously you'd have to look at it from underneath instead of from the top. So, I mean, that's, that's not the worst thing ever. I'm putting this as a B tier amiibo. You're in the B place, all right? And I realize I might have to speak about these a little bit faster because there are a lot of characters on my desk right now <laughs> to go through. So onward to Melee. We start off with Princess Peach. I really like this amiibo. You know, there's a weird Mandela effect with Peach, I've noticed. So this is the Smash Brothers series is the only series that has really decorated her dress this much. There's not this much white, the trim going all the way around and, and inside the white that's right under, um, or right above her belly. Uh, these design choices were only made for Smash Brothers, and I love that she has such a decorated dress in Smash Brothers. Um, this is a very nice pose. I really like this one. There is a plastic portion underneath to keep her from falling off because she's technically not actually standing on the ground, but because of the dress, it's a lot less noticeable. It's, it's a pretty good amiibo nonetheless. I'm putting this as an A rank. Amiibo. It is a very lovely one of our Princess Peach. Beyond that, Bowser. Um, this is this is awesome. I <laughs> I really am a fan of the heftier Amiibo, the one that have a good weight to them, and Bowser absolutely has that. It has a very dynamic pose. I love the Smash 4 pose for Bowser because he's just kind of clawing right out at you right here. And uh, the texture is it, the texture's great all the way across. The shell feels unique. They had to really smooth down a lot of the sharp points of him, but I think it works out very well. Uh, this, honestly, yeah, I would put this as an S rank amiibo. First S rank for, for melee. Bowser, I think he kills it there very much. And going from Bowser, you know, this is, this is crazy to me. The Ice Climber amiibo. So this is gonna be a thing you hear as we go along, but obviously, 
they were not in Smash 4. And they came out with Ultimate. And so during the Ultimate life cycle, we had Amiibo come up for characters that were missing in Smash 4 and didn't have one. And I think Ice Climber Amiibo is probably one of the best Amiibo in the entire series. And I would not have expected that from the Ice Climbers. We're not going for bias of characters. We're going for just the way it looks and feels. So in that Ultimate era, the bases that these characters are standing on and, and are supported by became a lot more um, characteristic of that character. So you got the icicles that are sticking out behind Nana and Popo here. And there's no other extra support because you don't need any extra support. Here we have, she's, her foot is sticking onto this uh, icicle back here. And so she doesn't need any support. They're not touching, they're, they're actually separate, just, just barely separate. And they look so good. They look perfect as they are like this. And it works out so well. They didn't put a weird plastic portion to support her underneath her leg or whatever. They put something that was actually look that actually looked really good as a backdrop to these characters, and that puts Ice Climbers as an S rank amiibo. Did not expect the Ice Climbers to be so high up here, but there we go. And on the opposite end of that is uh, Sheik. The Sheik amiibo, I think, unfortunately, is very underwhelming. It's very light, it's very small. I think she could have honestly been a bit bigger. And there's also this base that's also supporting Sheik. There's not much they can do about that. Um, because of the pose, they are floating in the air, they are leaping and bounding, but I'm, I'm not very impressed by this at all. If I look at the skin tone, it looks like the hands and the face are different color skin tone. I don't even know if you can see that. You can see that Sheik's face is more pale than the actual hand color. And I don't think that's an intentional decision, um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm just underwhelmed by this amiibo, unfortunately. And so it's you're gonna join Link down in the D tier, Sheik. Forgive me, that is just the way it's going to be. Moving on from Sheik, of course, I think it's funny that she was actually introduced in Smash before Zelda, because Zelda is our next amiibo, um, right here. We have Twilight Princess Zelda. This is one of the amiibo that I really wish we had the ultimate design for because I love that Zelda. That's pretty much one of my mains, A Link to the Past, A Link Between Worlds. I love that design and I really wish that they could have done another amiibo with Zelda. But Twilight Princess Zelda, obviously, she's still looking fantastic here. There's a... It's funny that we're in this era still of colored plastic because you can't really see it. It's purple where she's standing right here for her boot. You can't really see it at all when you're seeing her in the front, so it's not that offensive to me. It's kind of like with Sheik, it's it's not really that impressive to me. It is better, of course. There's a bit more volume because her dress is out as, as well. But yeah, I think this is one that I really wish they would have done another one for Ultimates. You know, I think I'll put this over in a B tier. It is not a Sheik level disappointing to me. Uh, it, it still looks pretty good in my opinion. After Zelda, we have the Doc, Dr. Mario. Um, he looks pretty good here. He doesn't look that bad at all. Much like with base Mario, uh, they have a very decent size for him here, fitting on the base. He is a very good looking amiibo. The pill's a bit shiny. It looks really nice. There's not too much to say about this, honestly. It looks really good. I just kind of compare it to the Mario amiibo, which is somehow not an echo yeah i mean i, I kind of put him right there up right there up them very solid amiibo i'll put him next to mario as an a rank there he is following dr mario we have right here pichu so pichu is an interesting one because it looks really pichu looks huge compared to the other amiibo pichu is like massive because pichu in the game is very tiny <laughs> and because pichu is also leaping in the air they had to stick a little plastic thingy on the foot so that there wouldn't be any uh, tipping over. But apparently that's that tiny little bit is all it needs to be able to, to support it. Um, it's very cute. It's Pichu. My only Johto representation in Smash Brothers, so I, I do enjoy playing Pichu. At least in, in the early days, I know John did as well. We were Pichu fiends back then. I, I guess it's because it's so disproportionate to the others that kind of throws me off i mean pichu is, is supposed to be small so i don't know why i'm complaining i like this amiibo as it is i'll put it in a b tier 
is a B tier amiibo. After that, we have good old Falco. I think Falco is a really good upgrade from what Fox was because there's a much less aggressive looking uh, support underneath his foot right there. It's just barely there. You can't really notice it at all because it's so small. But yeah, I mean, these two, these two look great next to each other because of the way that their poses are. I'm just upset that the little scouter, the little tiny scouter that's in here that they see through, uh, it's not clear or it's not plastic or shiny. I think if I could see their eye through this, it's a weird, it's a tiny, literally the tiniest complaint. If their scouters were uh, clear, transparent, I think they would rank a bit higher. But Falco, I, obviously Falco, I think he looks really good here. His pose looks fantastic. Falco, I'll put you in an A rank. He is an A rank amiibo, in my opinion. Following Falco is uh, quite, quite an infamous one. Um, we're at Marth. Uh, you can already see the sword has kind of depressed itself over the years. Um, Mart over here. I don't think I have one that has quite a bad looking face, but there was definitely those Marts back in the day where the faces were just kind of not very impressive. And this is very much in that era of Marth face where a lot of these anime characters, they didn't really look very good. Uh, they had trouble getting that tiny little bit of detail way back then. Uh, his sword, the falchion, unfortunately, his sword doesn't even have the openings that they're supposed to have. Like, it's it's just a solid, it's supposed to be like a claw. I don't know how, how I can describe it, but the hilt is supposed to be like two prongs on the side. But instead, it's like one full, there you go. It's like one full shape without the, the gaps between it, which... It aggravates me <laughs> because it shouldn't be like that. You're gonna see Fire Emblem Amiibo all over this list, up and down and everywhere. So I'm I'm putting Marth in the C tier. He's not terrible. He's not the worst ever, but he's very close to it. <laughs> now up next is one of my favorite Amiibo, honestly, and that is Young Link. Um, this is an example of what you can and what you should do to maximize the space given to you on the base of the uh, amiibo uh, pedestal, I guess we'll call it. Because he's kind of lowered down, he has a good stance, he looks like he just did a spin attack, and I think it works very well. It just looks very pleasing to look at at any angle, and it's honestly one of the best Zelda amiibo in my opinion. Man, if this had like the Majora's Mask reference that I wish he did in this game, with the hero shield or, or the mirror shield, or the, or the razor sword, that would have been like SS tier for me because this already looks very good. It's funny how we went from adult Twilight Princess Link is the worst to this is actually one of the best in the series. Uh, this is an S rank amiibo, and I'm happy to say that. Squaring off with Young Link is Ganondorf, the Twilight Princess version of Ganondorf. Um, I, I really, I feel like I don't have a lot to say about this. It looks really good. It's very nice. He has a very solid stance, and so he doesn't need any extra uh, plastic support underneath his legs or anything because he's already a thick boy <laughs> he's got a uh, kind of a, a kind of a rough looking face but you don't really see it very much honestly it's not really something that you pay attention to so much because the rest of his silhouette is so dynamic and looks so good Twilight Princess Ganondorf he has a solid spot on the a rank for amiibo very very nice looking on to another villain is Mewtwo. So Mewtwo has this massive base just kind of lifting him up off here. Um, but at least he was, oh, you know, actually that's right. Actually, I don't think I ever really noticed that, but he is not based, he's not stuck to the base. His feet aren't stuck there. He just, he's actually floating. I guess that's why there's such a huge one here because I mean, Mewtwo is all hips and thighs. Look at him. <laughs> he needs a lot of support down here. Otherwise, he has a really good shape and pose. Um, he's very smooth. He is supposed to be all smooth, so it does capture him pretty well. And that's that just kind of benefits a character like Mewtwo, where smooth designs really do look best on Amiibo. I mean, I'll put him at A rank. I'll put you right next to Falco, right there. That's the kind of the kind of energy I'm feeling from you. After that, we have. Oops, sorry, Ganondorf. We have Roy right here. Uh, our boy Roy. So, 
I know I said that poses where they're kind of just standing there are not really that exciting, but there's something about Roy here. There's something about the coloration. He has a completely unique design for Smash Brothers, just like Peach. Even more dynamically unique than Peach does, because when he was introduced in Smash 4, uh, they gave him, a, what, bell bottoms? I don't really know. You know what benefits him is that he's he has his sword sheath. The Sword of Seals is behind him. It's in the sheath. He has a really great coloration. The the armor is shiny here. The the sword details are actually this is when you can really get some details in that sword. It's not very easy to capture all the details of characters like Fire Emblem characters, and I think this does it really well. I I actually this is probably the best Fire Emblem amiibo spoiler alert for the rest of this series, and I'm gonna put him not the highest but somewhere in the S tier. Roy sits there proudly in the S tier rank. And now we have, to round off the melee characters, I, I you know who is coming. It's Mr. Game & Watch. He, <laughs> this is so funny. Mr. Game & Watch came with a pack of retro amiibo with the Duck Hunt Dog duo and with Rob. And with the Smash Brothers version of Mr. Game & Watch, we also got the, I don't know why I said Smash Brothers version, we got separate poses. So we have this one, of course, but we also have the nine with the little hammer for Judge and his taunts, which is the alarm bell for, you know, the watch part of Game & Watch. And he also has the uh, parachute version where he's flying around on, uh, based on fire, the, the game fire. I don't have that right now, because that Mr. Game & Watch, he's, um... He's living his best life, trust me. But, yeah, I... <laughs> what do I say? He, you can just remove this one, you can put whatever one you want on here, it's just a base now. Uh, I'm kind of annoyed that there weren't more bases to, to put more of them up. I know they wanted to add value to this one, because it's so simple. So, I, I appreciate them doing that. Uh, but, I mean, it's just a flat man. <laughs> uh, I, I'm gonna put him in B rank. It's true to his character, but he should have been flatter. He should have been just a, a thinner than a wafer. That would have been S rank for me. And with Melee being completed, that means we move on to the characters introduced with Super Smash Bros. Brawl. And the first one introduced, if you recall way back then, is Meta Knight. So Meta Knight suffers from, you, you see right here, he looks pretty good, but he does suffer from a plastic base behind. It's not the worst because I think his silhouette kind of helps to hide that very well. I know there's some amiibo that I kind of am hard on <laughs> when I'm showing them uh, from the front and the back, but I will give Meta Knight a little bit of a break because you do basically look at him in the front. And also his sword is one of the most stable swords of any other character that has blades. Uh, it still retains a very solid shape because his blade is so much thicker than the other ones, ironically, for Meta Knight. I think this is a really good amiibo. I, I honestly really do like this one. Um, I give Meta Knight my solid A rank. He may be top tier in Brawl, but he's just a little bit more nerfed as an amiibo. So moving onward from Meta Knight, also introduced in the first trailer for Brawl, is Pit. And I have some problems with Pit. Uh, Obviously, right away, no matter what angle you, you look at him, he's got a sky blue base, base. If there was more attention to detail made on these bases, you could have put something from Kid Icarus Uprising as, like, something to stand on. I don't know what, maybe just some ruins of Palutena's temple, just something else to stand on that would have looked nice. And I didn't really notice until I was cleaning this before, but there's a weird discoloration here, and it's not the fact that I, 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 I took care of this amiibo, but look at the fact that his knee, the knee that's facing you right now, is a different color skin tone than the rest of his skin tone. So his face, his arms, his, the other leg, and the foot, they all have a different color skin. I think the one on his knee is the, the, the tone that it's supposed to be, but he looks pale everywhere else. And just be, beyond that, I don't know if the face really looks that good on Pitts. Um, I think his other poses in uh, Brawl and in Ultimate would have been better suited for an amiibo. I, I'm not impressed with this one. There's a lot of weirdness going on, a lot of jank. And so I'm putting him in a C tier amiibo. Sorry, Pit. We'll, we'll fly again another day. After Pit was... Okay, here's another one. 
after pit was zero suit samus and uh, this might be one of the worst offenser uh, offensers this might be one of the worst offenses because if you turn her around what is what is this this is ha half of the amiibo from this angle it's just this cl uh, opaque it's not even clear it's opaque supports and it looks bad no matter even from the front it looks like she just got <laughs> she just got frozen in this thing and i mean the amiibo doesn't look terrible but this kills the whole thing for me it's so bad i know you're not supposed to be looking at it from the back but my goodness it, it's also just really small really light there could have been so much more done with her pose with this amiibo and I, i'm not really a fan of, <laughs> of it whatsoever this just hurts it so much for me and i it does hurt me to put her down in a d tier amiibo we've got like a d tier for each game thus far and so zero Suit samus i'm sorry but you're down there for me one that surprisingly i liked a lot is wario so this is an excellent amiibo honestly I, aside from the fact that he needs two different supports on there that kind of hurts it as well i mean he's got the same like size and shape as mario and so he fits the model the proportions of the amiibo required very nicely uh, my favorite part is the hurry up in the back uh, you can definitely read it out loud and if you touch it it does have a very different texture to it it has you can even see in the light a little bit you can see the denim texture in the jacket as he would have and there's a different texture for his pants as well uh, overall, I mean, he looks crazy, and that that's good, because Wario is insane, man. I'll put him in A rank. I, I can forgive the bases here, because the rest of him looks really nice. Uh, that's not always going to be the case. It's a case-by-case -case sort of thing. The final character that was introduced in the original trailer for Brawl was Solid Snake. Um, I'm really glad that we don't have the brawl pose for Snake because he really was just staring at you menacingly and just he was just a man standing there but this one he actually has his pose where he's on the codec uh, very iconic for Snake in Metal Gear Solid unfortunately his pose is too wide that they had to put the bases on his feet and they could have made him smaller but I think they wanted to really capture more details in him because there is a lot of good details in his uh, in his suits so the uniform does get shown off very well here. I do think it's a very good amiibo. Near Wario, not, not quite Wario level, but he is an A rank for me. Snake gets an A rank. After Snake, we have another Fire Emblem amiibo, one that I was really excited that actually was in the series in, at all, is Ike, one of my mains from Brawl. Um, this is a unique one because the face the face of Ike in this one, because he's an older Ike from Radiant Dawn, he has a much more like, he's got a solid jawline, but I don't think that jawline really complemented him very well in the plastic mold. The face is just really rough. I really wish this was Path of Radiance Ike, where he's younger. I don't mind that it's older Ike, uh, still I love Radiant Dawn as well. It's hard to forgive that, that structure. In the, the face counts for so much, man, it really does count for a lot. Uh, I do like Ragnell having very intentional, like, it, it looks scuffed, but it's supposed to be scuffed. The sword is actually very worn and ancient, so that works out. Although it has, it does have a weird, it has its own base down here, and I don't know why it has to go out to the side. This is a weird one, honestly. I put him at a B tier. It's not the worst Fire Emblem Amiibo, but it's really middle of the road for me. That's where he belongs right now. Uh, get ready for some Pokemon, because we're starting this one off with the trainer, with Red. I'm really sad, and this happens a lot in the series, unfortunately, but uh, we don't get Leaf, but we do get Red. The Pokemon trainer looks really good, though. He, he has a really good design. He has uh, denim in the pants. I, I love when you, get to see, when you get to feel some of the texture in these Amiibo. They look really nice. The Pokeball is extra shiny. Really solid. It's just a solid Amiibo. It looks really good. There's no need for extra plastic support. I will put you also at an A rank. There, there's a lot of A ranks, I know but they're just that good. Possibly joining Red there. Uh, we got Squirtle. Squirtle, it's hard to kind of, this is one where I kind of have to forgive the base behind that's just going straight up inside, it's right into the shell. It's like going, inserting within Squirtle's shell, which is, it looks very painful. 
but this Squirtle looks really nice. The smaller characters, obviously they look a lot better than the, the larger characters that need more detail shown. So uh, this would be an S rank Amiibo, but the base kind of ruins it for me. I don't really like it. I love that there's a shine on the shell. There's a lot to like about this one, but it is an A rank. I will put Squirtle as an A rank Amiibo. Beyond that, here's another one that has the same problems um, and the same uh, really good points about it is Ivysaur because he's kind of floating there, but Ivysaur is suffering from another pole just inserting straight up into his belly. It's a nice and hefty amiibo too, so it's a shame that kind of it gets docked for that. And something I also enjoy is that this is one of the only amiibo where the appendages that stick out, I mean, it's bendy, but it makes sense because it's a vine. It's a vine whip. I love that I can I can contextually bend it around and it makes sense um, for what it is. So Ivysaur, he also gets an A rank. I'll put Ivysaur at A. Unfortunately, the least impressive of the Pokemon Amiibo, that's uh, at least with Pokemon Trainer, would be Charizard. It's probably just because of size and proportions because you can't really make it much bigger and have more detail show. But there's a lot about Charizard that is, it does look good. But man, that brace back here, you've got that giant piece just holding him up behind there. And you'll notice this for other characters as well. If you look really close at the head, you can see that crease, that very visible crease on the jaw. So there's, yeah, the, the head right here, this portion, that would like pop right off if I use enough force. Not that I would, but you can see those creases all over the body. Great silhouette with the wings and everything, but still it's a bit lower. It's a B rank amiibo for Charizard. It's not the worst again, but it is a, it is a bit lesser than the ones I just looked at. Oh man, okay. Well, after that Pokemon trainers, we got Diddy Kong. Diddy Kong, at first glance, was a pretty great looking amiibo. And the more I looked at him, the more I started to feel the pain of the, that I felt with DK. Because, oh, lo and behold, the P stand returns on the bottom here at the base. So, unfortunately, Diddy Kong has to be supported by something. I wish it wasn't this color. Why? Why? What's the inconsistency of, of DK having the clear one, but Diddy has the yellow one? Is it banana related? I don't know. Um, the eyes as well. The eyes are supposed to be staring right back at me. Like, if, like if this is the very front right here, then the eyes are a little bit, they're supposed to be looking right back at you, but the eyes are unfortunately kind of looking deadpan uh, forward a little bit. Yeah. You see where the front of the base is and it's just kind of, he's just kind of a little bit derpy. <laughs> he at least has the visible Nintendo on the hat. That's absolutely required that you can read Nintendo on his hat. He's not the worst one, but he is going to sit with DK at the C tier. He is a bit of a C tier amiibo. So there he is. Lucas is next. Our good boy Lucas. So Lucas, I don't... It's funny because... I love the Ness Amiibo, but I don't think I have that same feeling with Lucas. I, I guess the, the meaner expression, not meaner, but he just looks a little more angry. That's not really much of a Lucas pose for me. I know that's kind of a weird thing to say. I, for those who play Mother 3, um, he's kind of a scaredy boy. And they, they, they show that off pretty well in Brawl when you see him with Ness. I don't know. There's something about this pose that doesn't really seem like it's in character as much. It's probably a me thing. I don't know if anybody else agrees, but yeah, I, I, I still like it. It's still a very good, well done amiibo, but just for that, I will put him at an A rank. He's, he's still he's still a great kid, and I hope the best for his life. <laughs> After that, we have the one that I have a little story with. It's Sonic. Of course, it's Sonic. So um, Sonic, I think this was the reason why. He's, he's the reason for everything. I remember I was at GameStop one day. I was picking, I don't know what amiibo I was picking up one day, but um, Sonic was also there. And the, the person at GameStop said, do you also want to get Sonic? He's available, he's available. And I was like, nah, it's okay. I think I'll just take the characters that I like, that I, I play as a lot in Smash Brothers. And so I left, I went to another store nearby and I, I, I kept thinking about him. He was in my brain. I kept thinking about Sonic. I was like, that is a really nice looking amiibo. At least what I thought at the time. And eventually I didn't go back and I picked up Sonic and I told myself I have to get all of them. 
I, I think I need all of them from this point. So it started with him because he looked, I mean, Sonic has such a perfect character design. So you have to have a thing that complements him very well. If he had the pose of when he like cleared a stage or something, I think that would elevate this so much. But the fact that he's running and he needs this massive pole, this massive goal pole, <laughs> Just sticking right up in the middle between them, I can't really give it that much of a high ranking because it, it just kind of gets in the way. I think a different pose could have complimented him much better. So, loved him at the time. I think he was my favorite one at the time, but looking at all the other ones, I think I put him at B tier. B tier for Sonic. Less disappointing is this absolute unit, King DDD. He unfortunately has a little bit of scuff because of the love and attention he's gotten in the past. I know one of my sisters actually really likes DDD because he is a penguin. And when I told him he was a penguin, um, they were enamored with DDD. So he does have some love there. Uh, he, he's just one of the more attractive amiibo, honestly. Great coloring. There's been a lot of DD, DDD designs. This is one of my favorite. He just has the goofy looking jolly old face. Um, definitely one of my favorite DD designs of any of them. And he's just really solid. He doesn't need any support because he is a king. <laughs> and so I, yeah, I put DDD. He is an S rank amiibo for me. Oh boy. Um, I, I, I don't know what to say too much about this one that will, wouldn't offend anybody, but here's Olimar. Now, at first glance, this is a fantastic, colorful, lovely amiibo because it represents Pikmin and Olimar together. But when I look at it further and further, these Pikmin are little blobs. <laughs> they're just, they're kind of blobby. They have a stand that's pretty much just like more plastic of, of the same texture, of the same make and mold, just kind of sticking on their bodies out of nowhere. And the clear helmet, I should like this. I should enjoy that there's um, a clear element to this, but you see the crease so desperately trying to hide itself, but going all the way across the head, all the way around there. And I, there's something about it that I just, I'm not a fan of how it looks. I, I Is it like too thick? Is it thin enough? I can't tell. I feel like I need to let him free. And there's also a base underneath Olimar as well. Uh, underneath his legs just trying to hold him up as well it's, it's it's shame because the pikmin amiibo that came with hey pikmin the one with like five little pikmin on there that's one of my favorite amiibo ever like i love that one but this one just doesn't it doesn't work for me there's something about this that the pikmin are too blobby <laughs> uh unfortunately i will have to put this into d rank I'm sorry y'all, you Pikmin fans, but it, it, there's something about it. It just, it doesn't gel with me. And I, I don't know why there's a second Pikmin and Olimar on this tier list. I, 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 I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give you a second opinion. You can go on D rank twice for being twice as disappointing as I thought you would be. Probably because we also don't have Alf. I would have loved to have an Alf amiibo as well, but poor boy didn't get the representation. But maybe that's for the better because I would have probably been just as disappointed in that one as I am with Olimar. So we're going to keep on moving on from there and get the hate out of my brain. We're going to go with Lucario was the next one introduced in Brawl. Lucario is like really middle of the road for me. I don't really dislike this amiibo, but also the stand kind of just hurts it as well. I always love the coloring of Lucario. Blue and black is like my favorite color combination. But overall, uh, if he had like maybe some flames, some some of the blue flames, like with Mario has flames, like I said, they didn't really add any other textures to Amiibo. But if they had something like those blue flames, I think we could have really had a nice looking Amiibo here. Uh, B rank Amiibo for Lucario, really kind of mixed with Pokemon. Now, next we have the robotic operating buddy himself, Rob. And I, I pulled this one out and I, I can't believe it. As I look at it, one side looks like it's totally fine. The other side looks like it's actually having the same yellowing that the actual NES would have after it's it's been out for a while. Is that intentional? Is this made from the same plastic as that? I, I can't tell. I don't know. <laughs> it's really weird. Because there's no other amiibo I have that's discolored in the same way that like an old console would be. It's it's baffling me right now. And maybe that's it, that is the case, and I didn't know, and I'm the only one that didn't know that. But 
all the textures, all the all the details in Rob, it, it looks amazing. Fits perfectly on the base, so I guess they wanted to get him as um, accurately on here as possible. Rob, he stands at a solid A rank amiibo for me because even I, I think the discoloration adds some charm to him, honestly. <laughs> so there's Rob, and following Rob, uh, we have Rob. Uh, <laughs> Rob was one of the only amiibo to have an alt color produced of him because this is the Famicom version. If you were to play Smash Brothers in the Japanese region, or with yeah, with the uh, Japanese language turned on, the default color for Rob, of course, is the Famicom colors, because over in the West, we got the NES, where it's much more gray and black. But here we have the more yellows and reds of this one, and I think it's also suffering the same coloration problems as the other Rob. It, it looks brighter here and a bit darker over here. I, I don't know how this is happening. It must be the texture that they use for this in particular, because it does look and feel a bit different. It's definitely different. That's so interesting. But you can read right here in front, it says, it's too tiny, but it says family computer robot on the front. So all the tiny attention to detail uh, is, is just, it's just lovely. I said I got every amiibo. I got every <laughs> a version of Smash Brothers amiibo. This sits right next to Rob. Uh, same A rank. I like these colors better, so I'll put them in front of gray Rob. We're quite nearly at the end of Brawl, but here we have the introduction of Toon Link. I'm sad to say that I don't really like this version of Toon Link very much at all. Uh, it, I mean, maybe that's a little too harsh. It's okay, but because he's having a leaping and bounding position of, for his pose, you have to have this plastic base underneath him that kind of gets in the way. Uh, the sword is a thicker sword, so it actually holds up pretty well. It is very bouncy and easy to move around. I really am trying not to compare to other Wind Waker style amiibo, but this is one of the weaker ones in my opinion. Obviously the art style is very is very much faithful to Wind Waker, so he's not terrible, but I do put him at B rank. He's not gonna be uh, as high as I think other people would be wanting him to. And rounding out Brawl is one that really surprised me, if you can guess who was final on the roster. Uh, it's Wolf. I was shocked with how much I like this amiibo. This is incredible. Uh, there's no need for an extra base, even though his feet are kind of coming off, there's no need for extra support because he has a really balanced weight to him. There's so much detail in here from the blades on his feet, you can see the extra blade on the gun as well, his blaster. Uh, he has, a lot of him has been sharpened down because he has all these claws and everything, but you can see the armor in his jacket, the buckle, and the, the shoulder pads have blades in them. I noticed designs about them that I didn't realize before. The the logo, I guess, in the back for Star Wolf. Um, yeah, it's this is an amazing looking amiibo. I was not expecting one of the Star Foxes, Star Foxes, one of the uh, Star Fox characters after Fox and Falco to look so good. But this is also a benefit of having your amiibo introduced in the era of Ultimate because he was not present in Smash for Wii U or 3DS. S rank amiibo for Wolf, very well done. Very much one of my top ranked amiibo in the whole Smash series. Now we've been through a lot of Smash amiibo thus far. I think you all need a break and I do too. So we're gonna be right back after a word from our non-sponsor. Take it away, Dan. Do you collect far too many amiibo? Do you hate cardboard and clear plastic? Are you a complete disaster when it comes to keeping your amiibo dust free? Are dust wipes just too hard for your smooth brain to use? Well, we've got just a solution for you, my friend. See, I collected quite a fair amount of amiibo in my day. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Nowadays, if they're not in the box, they're out on the shelf collecting dust. Cleaning them is not the easiest task. How do you clean your amiibo, friend? Cloth? Water? Canned air? No! What you need is a secret weapon for this task, and that, my friends, would be... Makeup brushes. Now, I know what you might be thinking. You're probably thinking, but Dan, do I look like I wear makeup? Now, whether you do or you don't, it doesn't matter because these brushes, they are so fine, so delicate, and are useful for so many things, including touching up your amiibo. 
And I'm not talking about just one or two brushes. You can get an entire set from the thicker ones to the very thin and intricate ones so you can get as meticulous as you need to. My favorite is this one that can both clean the hard to reach areas while also being able to brush off the larger spots. It's been very useful. And it comes in handy for any of your larger scale waifu or husbando figures. Just be delicate with them, as you would if they were... actually real. So why wait? Buy a cheap set now and you'll probably get like an extra 10 brushes thrown in. They're very affordable. And if you really want, you can use those spare brushes for some good vibes grooming if you need to. But please, if you're dusting with these, make sure they're your personal set and not one that someone's already using, huh? Thanks for stopping by. Have a great day. No, like I'm, de I'm demanding that you have a great day. No, seriously, have you better have a great day or I'm stopping by your door. Do you understand? This is a threat. Super Smash Bros. for Wii U and 3DS. The very first character revealed was... The Villager. Now, <laughs> this is another infamous one, released in the uh, very early days of Amiibo. I do not have the one that has the very silly, unhinged, derpy looking eyes. This one actually looks a lot better than the one you might recall seeing from way back then, where the eyes were just kind of... But this Villager, even without the eyes included, uh, the, the, the stance of him unfortunately needs a lot of support. You've got a lot of base, a lot of plastic on the bottom of his feet to try and keep him upward and upright. Otherwise, I mean, it's a nice amiibo, but I can't, I can't ignore the fact that a lot of them in their first production had the unfortunate deformity of the eyes. This one probably goes into B. I'll give it a B for Villager. You can sit there nicely amongst the other B ranks. After that, of course, was Mega Man. Uh, this one is a very nice looking amiibo. Uh, because of his wide stance, his big old feet, he's able to stand very much on his own without having any other extra support behind him. We have... This is another one where I think the creases actually don't matter so much because there's already a lot of different folds and creases and bends inside of him. So it looks pretty natural, even though a lot of them are very obvious in hindsight, but it works very well. The metallic sheen looks really nice on the darker blue segments than the more mattes on the light blue. This is a this is an A-rank amiibo. I'm sure Ash is very happy about that as well. Don't worry, I got you. After that, we have the Wii Fit Trainer, who, uh... The, the, the sheer irony... I remember there were so many people that were trying to get Wii Fit Trainer, Marth, and uh, Villager. That trifecta was very exclusive back in the day. This one, I don't know what happened with this one. Of all the amiibo to have a leg brace, it's the one posing in a way that would give an even worse uh, tension to that. And I, it's it's unfortunate because I, I think this is a me problem, but the uh, opposite side of this, uh, it has the leg looking its proper color, I think. Is that just me going crazy? Because it, it, it became very yellow on this side. It's not her fault. But she doesn't really fit on the base as well as she should because of the because because of the pose. She's got a great form, but not very good amiibo wise. And so, uh, as far as this goes, I'm gonna have to put you way down there as a D rank. First D rank in a while. After we fit trainer, we have of course Rosalina and Luma, and it's not their fault because Luma. I mean, it's floating there. Luma has to have some kind of support in order to have Luma there because it's Rosalina and Luma, not just Rosalina. I have to kind of forgive it at least a little bit because what can you do? You couldn't have this. I mean, I guess you could have Luma attached to Rosalina over here. That's probably the most they could have done if they really didn't want to put that, but then it looks kind of odd because Luma is their own character. Uh, you can see very, very minimally, there's a little bit of that same clear base underneath her dress. I'm observing respectfully that there is a bit more plastic under there beneath her because Rosalina is floating and she is definitely bigger than what you see with Peach because she is a bigger girl in size than Princess Peach. Um, it looks nice otherwise. I, I think it looks pretty good if we if we try and blot out the fact that there's a big plastic support here. So overall I think it's not as strong as Peach's. A B rank Amiibo. This is really where I remember that they all had some really great introduction in reveal trailers. And Little Mac, 
who's next on our list, also had a very good reveal trailer as well with that specific art style for Punch-Out. And I think this amiibo looks really good, actually. He is smaller, but I mean, he's little Mac, so that makes sense. <laughs> it actually works out for him a bit more than others, contextually. He doesn't need any extra support really at all because he's a smaller amiibo on his base. Uh, his stance, I think his stance just barely makes out having to not need any more plastic in front of him because he's leaning forward a bit, but it looks really good. I really like this amiibo. Uh, I put him in as an A rank. Lil Mac gets... Didn't put no punches with that one, he's an A rank. After that we have another Pokemon. We have the introduction of Greninja. Um, this one is interesting because it, he's, he's so short otherwise. He, his pose is very low. And because of that, I, I also am realizing that he's not actually touching the base either, like with Mewtwo. The feet here, back here, and this one is this front uh, hand, fins, <laughs> they don't actually touch the base. They're only touching on these two plastic other supports on him. I think it looks good because all your focus is lower and looking down here. It doesn't really suit it very well and it kind of distracts away from what should be uh, more focus on Greninja himself. What I'm trying to say is this is a B-rank amiibo. <laughs> it, it's a unique case because he is so low, but I'm going to put him as B-rank and leave it as that. After Greninja is, is a weird situation because we have the Miis, the Mi Fighter, the Mi Sword, I'm going to put them all together, the Mi Sword Fighter and the Mi Gunner. All three of these. So these are good amiibo. They look good. They look great, as they should look like Mii's. But I just don't have any attachment to them. <laughs> they have very teeny tiny bases under their feet, so you can't tell that they're actually being supported. But I, there's nothing really about this that I can tell is even remotely standing out to me in any, in any specific way. When I hold it, I don't feel any emotional attachment. I mean, it has probably the greatest trailer ever with Iwata and Reggie duking it out as a reveal trailer. But as Mii's themselves, I don't really use them. They're kind of not even represented like this, but people use all the other costumes for Mii's now. As good as they are, uh, I'll put them at B rank, all of them together, for the Sword Fighter, for the Brawler, and for the uh, Gunner. After Mii's, we have Lady Palutena herself. And there's a lot happening with this one. This is a very detailed amiibo. Uh, and fills the base up very much. And because there's so much happening, the entire back around her feet, around her ankles and going up, is covered with plastic to support her because there's so much going on here. The clear wings behind her, which kind of hooks into her hair, but that's only when you're looking from behind. Uh, this staff goes all the way down over here, it's one item. There's so much detail in her shield that her shield is probably the most flimsy thing that I've ever seen on Amiibo. It's very loose and it could just fall right off if I pull this hard enough because there's so much more attention to, to detail just getting stuff on there. Um, and the face, uh, the face, the eyes look a little bit dark. They're a little hard to parse because there's so much going on, but it is very detailed. The dress looks great. The hair is very flowing and gives it a good uh, uh, a shape as well. As it stands, I think this is probably in the middle of A rank amiibo, and I'll rank it there. This is when we're starting to introduce Echo Fighters. I forget when Dark Pit was introduced, actually. That's the one I don't really know, but I'm, but he was in Polytana's trailer, that animated trailer, so I'm gonna add him right here. Uh, Dark Pit is probably the longest amiibo. He, he's just as tall as he is wide <laughs> over here because of his uh, the uh, weapon he used, the sniper, for his final smash. And, I mean, otherwise, he's just kind of standing there. He does benefit from not having the bluish stand that regular Pit has to, has to deal with. So I'm not as offended with this boy as I am with uh, actual Pit. But it is kind of plain. It is kind of, there's not really much going on here other than that. I think he gives a decent B rank for Amiibo. So we'll put him in there for now. After that, uh, one that impresses me a lot more. So. Might be one of my favorites. Can you guess? Is Pac-Man. Pac-Man. This is this is classic. This is classic Pac-Man. I wish I had 
a long time ago, I had some tokens when I went to the arcade, some Namco tokens with Pac-Man on it, and he's doing this same exact pose. It's, it's just amazing. It's fantastic. It's not even that complicated, but it's the fact that it reminds me of way back then when I used to play with those tokens and just the classic Pac-Man pose of the winking face, the thumbs up, and the classic Pac-Man design. Bless Sakurai for not using the other abomination of a design that he may be known for these days. This is this just brings all the happy feels to me, and I, I can't imagine him any other way. This may be some bias coming in, but this is in fact a S rank amiibo. He's going to the very top. I love him. That's where he sits. And so before this next one was actually the Echo Fighter for this character that joined him. Uh, I have Lucina as well. Uh, Lucina, uh, I was extremely happy to have Lucina join when she had her reveal trailer with Robin. I didn't know if it was going to be her or Krom and that whole trailer played with that idea. I still wasn't sure during the trailer when she was revealed because it was like revealing her with a question and I didn't know what that meant but there she is. She's here. I made her in Smash 4 for a long time and she has the pose. Like she, she's definitely doing the pose that you see in you know official art and whatnot but it doesn't really uh, the, there's so much width here that it kind of it, it kind of compromises some of the size that could be here and all the Fire Emblem characters are kind of the same size so maybe um there's not much I can do about that but there's also this really obnoxious base this the plastic that's behind her going all the way up and also the face is kind of rough still but I think it's better than some of the other Fire Emblem amiibo that we do have unfortunately with some of the lower rank I want to like her more I guess that's why I bought a Figma of her <laughs> But I'll put her at a B rank for Amiibo. Also introduced in that same trailer was Robin. Now this one, I actually like this one quite a lot. Even though he's got just the standing pose, he's oh, holding this book, his lightning tome. He has the Levin sword, which actually also is supported very well. It's it's not it's bendy, but it hasn't curved itself. It's it's still retaining a very good shape. It just looks good. I like how his silhouette works with this. The robe comes out to kind of match up and line up with the base, so that looks really nice. And the face, it looks better than Lucina. I think it, it looks a lot better. Robin, surprisingly, I'll put him at A rank. You see, we're hitting all the ranks with them Fire Emblem Amiibo. Another sword fighter coming up. Um, man, it's Shulk. <sighs> this, if this was the era which they were utilizing more unique, like, bases and support background, I would have loved it if this was instead of just this clear plain plastic if it was some kind of just some kind of the metallic material you see on the mechanis or on the bionis just something that he's leaning up against or even just like some stones with moss on it something to help identify xenoblade as a series but no it's it's just a plastic base on here the pose just doesn't really work too well on a figure uh, the monado looks kind of wacky it's a little bit Bendy, it, it's kind of curved at this point. This is where you put your finger, where it's on the Wii disc. I remember that that specific part. People who have this game on Wii know. Overall, Shulk, I, I don't know. Everyone already complains about his face in Smash, and I, it doesn't really have any any other justification here as well. It could have been bigger. It could have been done differently. The skin tone's kind of off on certain parts. So yeah, I mean, I'm gonna put him at. A, uh, a C rank. Sorry, Shulk. After Shulk, we have Bowser Jr. Um, this is a fun one. I like this one because we're, we he has the Koopa Clown car. So I kind of forgive it for being on a base because it has to. I mean, it, it, it has no feet. It has to be supported in one way or another. And the main attraction is up here, anyways, with Bowser Jr. Uh, he looks great. He looks really good. I like this one kind of benefits from having a, a completely extra thing on it um, but I mean that's that's the fighter he is in that Koopa clown junior car so this is probably yeah it's a solid a rank I think after Bowser jr we're getting more retro here we have duck hunt the duo um, this is also one that like with Luma you can't really fault it for having a massive base behind it because the duck needs it he, he the duck doesn't really have a choice 
<laughs> it has to be on something if you want to work with the art. If you wanted to make it work, I guess you would have had the duck kind of just sitting on the dog somewhere. It looks good otherwise. I put you into B rank. I think they could have done this a little bit better overall, but B rank sounds okay with me for Duck Hunt. After Duck Hunt Duo, we got into some of the DLC for Smash Bros. for Wii U. And one of the first original characters for Smash Bros. for Wii U DLC is Ryu. And this one, honestly, is really good. Ryu's got his classic pose, the Ryu pose, the pose you always see him in every Street Fighter ever, and that works very well for this. Um, there are two bases on his lay, on his pants, or coming up from, well, the gi, I don't want to get it wrong. Um, it's emerging from the bottom, but actually it goes over the, the leg, so it's kind of going underneath the, the, the cloth, which, which makes it a little less noticeable. And I mean, if you if you ignore the ankles, if you ignore that, everything above it, it just looks really good. I think it's a really fantastic looking amiibo. Um, the proportions look great. He just his has. This is when they actually were able to solve having good faces on amiibo because Ryu's face just it looks very faithful, and I think that looks really good. This is an S rank. I'm gonna give Ryu the S rank for amiibo. Very nice. Uh, and then we're gonna get to some other characters and variations but after that so first one also in a classic pose we got cloud still blew my mind that he's in here um it's weird because his sword despite the size of it it's still bending a bit and actually there's more bend on the hilt of the sword than anything but he does have the classic pose uh you can't really dock it for that it's a really good looking amiibo honestly the biggest complaint probably is the hair <laughs> Because of how spiky his hair is, they had to really shave a lot of that down. And so it's just a bunch of noodles sticking out of his head, unfortunately. <laughs> it looks really good otherwise. Um, I think I can forgive that. Looking at it from far away, it looks really nice. Except for the slight bend on this here. I'm gonna have to dock it a little bit. So it's probably a low A tier for me. And along with Cloud, we have the other version of Cloud. This is where we introduce the player two version of amiibo they only applied it to three characters and no one else <laughs> but this is essentially the same pose uh more or less just slightly altered with the buster sword behind him uh the Avon children outfit of course looking really nice i like this outfit more i love black what can i say i noticed i never really noticed that the hairstyle is different for advent children cloud than for um regular cloud even the color is a little bit different again the hair is just kind of unfortunately smooth it down to a way where it, it, he looks a little silly. I mean, obviously I'll put him with Cloud in the same tier, mostly the same pose, but he's got a better outfit, so I'm putting him above. After Cloud, we have Corrin. Oh boy. Unfortunately, there was no other time where male and female variants were done. No villager, female, male variants. No a Wii Fit Trainer male variants, no Robin female variants, but Corrin is a different story. So we're starting with male Corrin. Uh, this amiibo angers me. <laughs> this this base, this support, it's just a smooth arc going all the way up behind his back. And it's annoying. Not as much as the sword though. This sword, I mean, I don't even have to really do much else other than show you from this angle. It's just curving all the time. I think when I got it, it was curving like this. It's so aggressive because all of this like melted pink Jolly Rancher candy texture on the sword is making it really hard to justify. I mean, I know the Yato Blade has like these flames coming out of it and it's not the last time we'll see this either, but it, it, oh, it looks so bad. <laughs> it, the flame effects don't look too good unless you're doing it like with Mario's fireball that looked really nice because it was a smooth arc but coming from a weapon that's supposed to be protruding outward it, it doesn't work and I don't like it and it doesn't help that I'm not really a fan of male corn in general this is not my favorite C rank that's what I'm trying to say he's a C rank amiibo we have male corn we also have a very elusive female corn I remember this one being so hard to get uh, for a lot of people it was on Amazon it's exclusively on Amazon for like three minutes and then it sold out and we like never saw it again for years. 
but I managed to get one. This is the original one I had. Um, this one is a bit better. There's not a huge amount of support, only on the feet. She's finally wearing something where her shoes would be. There's still, unfortunately, the massive amounts of pink on the sword. There is so much of it. I know you're supposed to look at her from the front, so there's less on there, but uh, from a different angle, it looks like it's just completely covered in it, and it doesn't look very good. It could have been much more subtle. I'm a fan of female Corrin more than male Corrin, and the pose just looks a lot more elegant. It looks a lot, it, it flows very well on the amiibo. So overall, I do rank this higher than the male version, which is, I think, the first for like different forms of characters. I would put Corrin, female Corrin, honestly, not even that much higher. It's probably a B rank. It's probably a little bit above Lucina. That's probably where I would put her. And finally, the last character to reveal for Smash for Wii U is Bayonetta. Man, there's a lot happening. <laughs> there's a lot happening with this one. Um, I'm mostly annoyed by just how wide her stance is for this. They want to have as much possible on this without having to compromise her size. And I understand that. I get it. She's not even on the base. If you look at the bottom, like her feet are both off of the base entirely. And that's just hilarious to me. If you're looking above her ankles, uh, it looks great. Uh, there's a lot of detail here because she has just that amazing, fabulous pose. Her face looks really good too. She's got the wink. She's got the beauty mark. I'm sure Hideki Kamiya is very pleased with that. <laughs> Overall, yeah, it's, uh, it's hard to like, look past the fact that there's massive blocks at her feet. This could have easily been like some kind of other texture that shows maybe those effects that happen when she's summoning the umbral beasts. They could have did something like that, but I'll put her at B rank. B for Bayonetta. And then over here is actually my most recent amiibo acquired aside from the final one in the series is the player two amiibo of Bayonetta. Uh, these poses, man, Girl can't keep her lace closed. Look at that. She's just all the way apart. <laughs> also with the same bases. Not as big as before. But man, she's way too fabulous for her own good. But I think this one looks better than the, the original Bayonetta. There's such a nice flow to it. And overall, I think this is a better one. There's a lot happening. These ribbons go all the way down. It, it looks so cool. They did a lot with this one for sure. And I think it works out better than the player two, uh, no, player one version of Bayonetta. I keep forgetting that Bayonetta two is the default and Bayonetta one is player two. It's confusing. But yeah, I think I'll put this one over at a solid A rank. Uh, maybe you next to Politina. I think you have some good energy there with each other. And that's it for Smash for Wii U, which means we're finally at the last group. I actually, I need to grab them. There's no more room on this desk. I had to very carefully roll them all out and I hope I don't break anything or move anyone too hard. So yeah, it's the last stretch everybody. And as you know, we started the hype train with Smash Ultimate with Inkling. I did not get this amiibo for a very long time because I had a, an Inkling amiibo from Splatoon series, same outfit, same costume, same color. And you can tell that I, I caved <laughs> and I got the actual one with the gold base and pose. Um, this one looks great. I love how this looks. My only con complaint probably is you can see on her head, it looks like she had a uh, brain surgery because the crease on her head goes all the way around the top. So that kind of hurts it when looking at it from a different angle. But from the front, it looks really good. The shine on the inkling, like the actual like squid part looks really nice. The, the, the clear plastic here, done right <laughs> for her tank, looks really good. Uh, this is an A rank. I think I'll put you a little bit higher than Mario. A rank amiibo. And we can't forget the next Echo Fighter that was revealed, which is Daisy. Um, this one looks really good. When you compare this to Peach, this definitely looks better than Peach's, I think. And also, as with Peach, there's a really nice design going around her dress. It comes out a bit better than hers for sure. There's a bit of a base underneath. There's not really much you can do about that because she's kind of leaping forward and we need to support her. I think her face looks better than the other princesses, uh, Rosalina and Peach. Definitely the best of the three princesses. So she's a, she's a solid A rank. I think she's a good, a high A rank. Now it's getting some hardcore amiibo work here. Uh, Ridley. Ridley is incredible. 
I, I mean, this is what I was hoping for a lot sooner. The base of this lends itself very well. It, it just looks like really just dropped down from below and just shattered the floor. There's so much detail. There's so much, so many angles. It's so thin, but there's so many good looking. Just, I mean, you can look at it from any angle. And it looks great. It really looks fantastic in this one. Really, of all ones I was thinking about, I didn't expect it. I think I would give really an S rank, like a really high S rank for Amiibo, because it just looks so good. A lot of villains are up here on S rank. I, I'm, I'm quite surprised. After Ridley, we had a whole montage of characters that got revealed. One of them being the Belmonts, starting with Simon Belmont. Um, this one's really good. I think uh, this is a very solid Amiibo. The Morning Star that goes around here, uh, it touches the arm, very strategically touches the arm. And so it's able to support itself without needing like anything else. I, I don't, I think it, I think they had to really just nudge it a bit from the official art just to make it look like that because it's not going to be able to, to be faithful to the art any other way. Uh, he does need some bases on the very bottom, but they're, they're not very noticeable compared to the rest of this man's mass. <laughs> I think this is a really solid A rank amiibo. This is really good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much where I'm going to put you, it's Mr. Belmont. As we move on to the other Belmonts, Rector Belmonts. Rector has the same style and overall design philosophy as Simon. So, you know, he has a white stance. He's got the the beefcake muscles over here. He's wrapped around the Morning Star on his wrist, on his wrist, around his hand this time. And so it, it's not as like dynamic, but I think it works out better that way. The way he looks and the way that it's positioned, I think I'll put this above Simon. Might be a true controversial take but i'll put him there anyways okay so after that we had a reveal of more echo fighters in that trailer one of them being crom he finally had his time come to him i know i said i didn't want to compare it to any other amiibo outside this series but i just have to point out that crom's cape and no matter what amiibo it's just out of control it's just going everywhere and it will not be held back <laughs> But I won't be comparing it much to that one, I just wanted to bring up that point. His sword is one of the worst offenders of Kirby Sword Syndrome that you can ask for. Uh, it's very bent, uh, bent around, maybe it looks really a lot more noticeable there. I've never touched it, I, don't, I have no reason to, but it's very thin, more so than Lucina's I think. And so it curves a whole bunch and there's, there's not a whole lot you can do to prevent that. He, he looks pretty good, I think I like how he looks honestly. He's a really good Fire Emblem amiibo. I would probably put him at... He's like a high B rank, like a really high B rank. Maybe the highest of the B ranks, because I really do enjoy these. A lot of the amiibo in Ultimate, they're really up there for me. There's not really a lot of bad ones, so get prepared for a lot of high ranking ones. Just to be, just in general. Unfortunately, one of the ones that don't fit there, I know I just said that, is Dark Samus. Um. There's something about the Metroid ones in the Smash Brothers series that just don't really impress very much. I mean, I'm talking about Samus himself, herself, the Samus ones, or the copy of Samus, because Ridley obviously is an S tier. So, evil wins today, except for this one, I guess, because it, it's kind of mediocre. I mean, the texture is gnarly. It looks so cool. It's shiny. It's bumpy, as it should be for being made of Phazon. But that Phazon, it could have been here. The base could have been like emerging in like some kind of tendrils or tentacles or something that looks like Phazon or the, the Metroid Prime's uh, uh, tendrils. It could have looked really good, but they opted for just a very plain background, a very plain backdrop. And yeah, you can just see through the crystal where the extra little hinges come out and it, it doesn't look very good. <laughs> Those bits that help keep her in place, it's, it's not really working for me, honestly. So. Dark Samus, you can be a C tier, but you'll be a high C tier. We'll at least give you that much because I do enjoy that texture and it looks and feels really cool. After Dark Samus, we had the um, the reveal of the the actual absolute unit, King K. Rule. King K. Rule is a really nice looking amiibo. He I, he understandably needs some support. You can see right here because he's such a large unit. There and his feet are not that big. He doesn't have much support, so his legs are probably killing him, but it looks really nice uh, as it is. It looks really good. He's giving you the stink eye right there. Uh, I love how shiny 
his belly is very glad that they made that so and the texture of his cape feels really good too he's just kind of he's a very good feeling texture but i don't know i it's i guess that base just barely snipes it from being an s rank so he's probably i would say the very top of the a he has like a blue ruby you ever notice that he has a blue he has five rubies connecting his cape here that's really that's really neat top of the a rank top of the a rank to you for king k roll respect the kings out here after king k roll we had this very <laughs> very teeny one in comparison isabel Isabel has the smallest feet, if you can even call those nubs feet, so she needs some support to be held up by this clear plastic. Uh, no matter what angle you look at her, she does have that clear plastic there. Funny enough, I, I did own a lot of the Amiibo for Animal Crossing, and that was one of the ones I had as, as a stand-in for a long time. But as time went on, I had to leave those Amiibo. I no longer have any Animal Crossing Amiibo figures. This at least, at least I have her. So I'm very happy about that. She kind of gives me that those Pichu vibes of it looks really good. I think if Pichu was more smaller in this size and Isabel was a bit bigger, they would have helped boost those ranks up a bit. But I'll put you next to Pichu. How about that? You are a B rank amiibo, Isabel. Thank you for your service. Next on the list is Ken, the original player two besides Luigi. Uh, Ken, this is really funny. I think Ken's face here looks better than he ever did in Street Fighter V. <laughs> you know, it, it's hard to really knock him anywhere lower than, than Ryu because, I mean, it just looks good. He just looks amazing. These fighting game characters just look great as they are. Uh, same deal with the, with the base on here. He has to have a little bit of a support, but it goes underneath the leg, the fabric of, on the leg, and so they're kind of hiding there. And as I mentioned before, every, anything from the ankles upward, it's just, it looks amazing. It looks fantastic. I love how this looks. I do like Ryu's a bit more, but I will put Ken at a solid S rank. Probably at the bottom of the S rank. We'll put him, we'll put him down here instead. And rounding out the base roster, for the most part, for Smash Brothers Ultimate, is Incineroar. Uh, I love the coloring here. It looks really bold, dynamic. Really good amiibo aside from another base, another support, just locked right into his spine. <laughs> of all the Pokemon that have been released for amiibo, it's really like middle of the road because there's a lot of really high quality ones like Squirtle, Ivysaur, the Pokemon Trainer. I think Mewtwo, I think I like Mewtwo just a little bit better because it, it, the support is a lot less obvious. You know, I'll put you right next to Mewtwo actually. Incineroar goes next to Mewtwo in the A tier. And so we have reached the end of the base roster. So we're at the final stretch. We're in for the DLC fighters for Smash Brothers Ultimate. And of course, that started with one of the free ones, if you if you got the game early. Piranha Plant. This plant, it shouldn't look this good, but it's so good. I and mean, it's right down here in the middle. The little pot is here. Uh, there's like the, the the dirt inside looks dirty the leaves look leafy the head looks dangerous I, I could put my finger in it and I feel like he's gonna bite down and chew me it's scary but I love that depth that depth of going inside the mouth and the tongue and the teeth it, it looks so good it's so good I feel like prana plant shouldn't look this good but I mean it looks perfect uh, perfect representation I can't see any negative creases anywhere. How do they do that? I don't know. S tier. S tier for Piranha Plant. Respect the plant. Plant gang, I am here for you. Another gang I'm here for is Persona. Now, I know I love the use of extra effects for bases, but this might be a little too much. <laughs> it it kind of distracts away from Joker a little bit because of how much there is here. But I understand why they did it because his pose will absolutely not work if it was like a, a giant stand like right going down right here or something so he needed to have something for that just having a persona amiibo it, it blows my mind the fact that there is a, an amiibo for a persona character and that persona is involved in this series at all this one it, it is really good again this is one that reminds me that anime characters and with their thin 
in tall proportions uh, do not benefit very much from Amiibo because they're they have to be compromised in one way or another. As as cool as it is, I will put you at like an A rank. You're not an, you're not quite an, an S rank tier Joker, so you know you're you're pretty close. It does benefit from the face of having a mask. You don't have to see as much of the face <laughs> in detail. After Joker. We went a long time without knowing any other characters, but we did eventually re reveal to us Dragon Quest XI's hero, um, otherwise known as Eleven. I'm really sad that there was no other amiibo for like Erdrick, for Solo, and for Eight. I would have loved, loved an Eight amiibo because uh, he's the Dragon Quest hero that I use, and he's my favorite of the of the of the series. Eleven looks really good here. I do love this. Ooh, yeah, the sword looks really nice. We've come a long way in sword designs because, at least from how we had Marth with Falchion a long time ago, uh, very solid, very good looking amiibo. You know, I can't, there's not really much I can say against it. Every time I dock it a little bit, it's wish, I wish it was a bit bigger. I wish they had a pose that worked a bit more that isn't just standing, but you know, there's some amiibo I really like where they're just standing, so what do I know? Uh, a rank, I put you as an A rank amiibo. Beyond that, we have the one and only Banjo... I had this for a very long time in place of Banjo and Kazooie uh, for their amiibo. And it's it's kind of dusty, it's kind of it's kind of silly looking, but I... What is this from? Totaku. I, I, I had this somewhere. Oops. Don't mind that. He's okay. The real Banjo and Kazooie amiibo Uh huh. It's so good. It's fantastic. I love this amiibo. This is probably one of my favorite amiibo. The Jiggy. The Jiggy brings it all together. This is exactly what I was looking for as we move on more and more to very stylized bases. Just seeing them here, is they're so vibrant and happy. You look at the back, the backpack has the Rare logo on it as it should. Uh, Kazooie is kind of popping out in a way that still looks believable and not just like a head and bird and bird wings sticking out of a backpack. Yeah, I mean, maybe the eyes look a little funny on Banjo, but that's really the only thing I can say against it. It looks, they look so good. So happy to have them here. Uh, this is an S rank amiibo. This is probably like right underneath Pac-Man for me. Very close. On another day, you ask me, it probably would be Banjo Kazooie at the very top. Next on the list is Terry Bogard. Uh, you can see the Fatal Fury is very visible on his hat. And there's something I noticed with fighting game characters, uh, or these characters that originate from fighting games like Ryu and Ken and Terry Bogard and, and some others that we haven't revealed yet. Their stances, because they're in fighting games, they're very low. They tend to be a lot lower in their, in their fighting stances. And so they can really just kind of extenuate more of their character on here. And um, Terry, <laughs> all the fighting game characters, almost all of them, they have to have some kind of base holding them down because their stances are so wide and they're lower so they can compromise more space for them. Uh, his feet aren't even touching here again. He's kind of floating. <laughs> he's just kind of floating here, but he does look really good. The pant legs have a good denim texture to them. Um, the face is a little hard to see, but that's just, that's just the pose itself. I think I still like Ryu and Ken a little bit better, so he will be an A rank. We'll put you next to the King, next to the King K rule. After Terry Bogard, we got another one I kind of lament a bit, but we have Byleth. We didn't get Lady Byleth, but we got Male Byleth. Um, I don't know why Player 2 stopped being a thing. Maybe Amiibo was starting to slow down at the time and the budget kind of was a little too costly after the first wave of Player 2s, but we got Byleth at least. And suffering as well from having just a bunch of dried up cheese on the, the sword in this case. I know... The, the Sword of the Creator has flame effects on it as well, but it doesn't really do too much to add to it. I would have preferred it to just be plain and by itself. It didn't really need to have that on there. He looks good any other ways. My canonical and favorite uh, avatars would be male Robin, female Corrin, but you know, for Violet, I kind of like both of them. Both of their designs are really nice for me. Professor can sit over here uh, nicely on the B rank. Maybe next to Krom. You kind of give me the same feeling as Krom when I look at you. Now, here's one that is... It's so much. It's Min Min. 
Min Min has so much going on, and she also has that wide low stance, as I was saying earlier, from fighting game characters. And so they were able, actually able to fit in so much with her in a, a very decent amount of space. The, the dragon arm, the, uh, the, the secondary arm that you have here. Uh, this base is interesting because it is a unique shape, or the support is a unique shape, but it's still the, the clear color. So I think they could have benefited from having like a solid color instead. But it does work really well. Uh, it looks very nice. I, there's so much detail happening here. It, I think this barely saves it from being any lower than an S rank because, yeah, it, it looks, it just looks so good. You need to have a lot of support for this because this, this stretch was strategically made so this arch would support the dragon arm, which has a lot of weight to it. I can tell. This is an S rank for me. Please do not cook al dente and eat. Trust me, it doesn't taste that good. So after Min Min, Min I okay. We have Steve. And Alex, uh, I, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say about these two? They're, they're Minecrafts. They're blocks. How can you get this wrong? You have to get the colors wrong, which they're not. They're perfectly colored and textured. What do you, what do you say about these? I can't, I'm, I will, I can't put them S rank. It's because they're, they're perfect. They look perfect. They're, they're, there's nothing else you can do with these amiibo. To make them look better than they are, but they are just flat shapes. So I'm gonna begrudgingly put them in A rank because they look great. <laughs> There's nothing else I can say about it. Uh, but someone that I can say a bit more about is Sephiroth. This is wonderful. I, this is great. Sephiroth, he is truly a villain of all time because he has this thick block on his leg back here, on the very back. But I think I can forgive that, you know? Because he has such a defined silhouette here. They got away with having his sword be as long as it is to fit here. I wonder if they had Amiibo in mind when they did his uh, his character art, because he does hold the sword back where them, the Masamune. And the wing really brings it together. The, the silhouette of the wing, it looks so good. It feels really good too. Uh, very iconic for Sephiroth. It just looks so fantastic. This is... It's weird because he is that anime character, but it makes him look so much more uh, larger and bigger. So, I, this is probably the highest rank anime, like classic anime character I can put. So, S rank for Sephiroth. S for Sephiroth. Evil wins again. So, th this one, it kind of hurts me because I want to like it more, but here's Pyra. Now, I feel like I need to put it exactly looking up front. Hold on, let me move some stuff here. I think I need to have her looking exactly as you see here in the character art in order to make her look correct because the pose just doesn't really work for me. The pose, it, it doesn't, it, at a side, it looks like she's awkwardly skipping and hopping across. Um, and she's also, she's just sitting right there. It's just sitting right on that plastic piece. There's nothing else I can do about this. It, it there, that's just where she is. There, there's nothing else I can really do to, <laughs> to say. She's just a really thin character, and it, it just it doesn't really fit the way. The weight is all obscure here, and it's not your fault, Pyra. I'm sorry, but the pose just doesn't work in this way. So I have to actually put this down here. With you're probably down with Shulk at a C rank. Pyra is down there, unfortunately, and I feel bad about that. But other than that, we have Mithra instead. Mithra actually works a bit better with her pose because she's kind of leaning back. It looks a lot more elegant looking at different angles. Funny enough, it's harder to look at from the front because she's kind of like leaning to the side and her arms just kind of out. It's difficult because they're both sitting on this stand. They both have a little extra stand for their foot because they're floating. They could have definitely done this a bit easier. I, I do like this more than, Myth and than Pyra, so I think I'll put you a bit higher. You're probably over mm, yeah, the B rank. We at least put you on the B rank, the true final stretch, because right now we have Kazuya Mishima. Kazuya, as with the other fighting game characters, again, wide stance, two different uh, bases to hold him up. But man, this looks, this is gnarly. Like this is crazy. The, um, the scars on him, 
You think they're painted on, but no, you they're actually textured into his skin. Like you can actually feel and your fingernail will dip into that texture, which is crazy. Not someone who's played a lot of Tekken at all, so I can't really say too much more about the posing and everything, but he does, his face looks distinct enough that it looks different and unique here, and it looks really good. Very solid amiibo. I'll put you with Terry. He is an A rank for me. A rank amiibo. That's it for everyone except Sora. We've come truly full circle around with Sora. The fact that there's a Sora amiibo, it's, it's a dream for many of us come true. And I'm very sad that this was the last, the final Smash amiibo that I ever opened. So, end of an era, truly. Great looking amiibo. I really wish they had the other versions of him, like Kingdom Hearts 2 Sora would have been like instantly my favorite. Dream Drop Distance and Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom Hearts 3 Sora would have looked the best, I think, because he's actually, you know, he's just standing there with the Keyblade aiming downward. I love that he doesn't need any extra support because his giant yellow Mickey Mouse shoes are so big that they are the support. <laughs> he doesn't need anything else. The face looks pretty good. I think the arm kind of looks a little silly, just kind of sideways, that sideways look. This, this would have been too much, but if they actually made the keychain like a metal hanging keychain with the Mickey Mouse symbol on it, I think that would have been perfection. But obviously they don't have the budget to do that. That's fine. Uh, Sora goes at an A rank. I think he's very much deserving of being up there for sure. Wow, that's it. I did it. We ranked every single amiibo. So here's the full list. Uh, this is the entire list of my opinion of how these amiibo rank by look, by design, by pose, by all that good stuff. Uh, everything here is just my opinion, of course. Uh, there's some here, uh, maybe on any given day of the week, I'll look at it and I'll say, nah, this is a bit higher, this is a bit lower, but you know, it's my list. Thank you so much for watching me talk about amiibo for way too long. I have a mass of plastic all over my desk right now. I don't know what to do. One day I'm going to move out somewhere and I'm going to have them all displayed in my batch shop one way or another. Um, extra tip, if you if you by any chance have like a place where you can buy something that sells cassette tapes, I'm going to use this as an example, uh, cassette tape shelves. If you have anything that has a big long shelf, uh, these Amiibo actually look are perfect size so that they're, they'll all snugly fit. There's no Amiibo that's higher than a, uh, than a cassette tape. So if you ever find a shelf with those somewhere, uh, definitely get those. They will hold them very well. I have one here, it's holding my games right now behind this wall. But one day I'll be able to set that up for sure. But at this point, now I'm rambling, I'm tired, I'm hungry, and I have a lot of plastic to put away. So thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you like what we do here, if you want to see more insane tier lists like this, maybe we'll do more in the future. Uh, let us know down below. What's your favorite amiibo? Tell me what you think your favorite Smash amiibo or any amiibo is. I'm a big amiibo fan here, so please let me know. Otherwise, it's been good. It's been great. And this amiibo line is finally complete. I'm, I'm never buying one ever again. Stop telling me when Noah and Mio are available. Stop it! All right, everyone, till we meet again.